traditional weed killer versus homemade weed killer. Which one works the best? I don't know, let's find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Warren and you're watching The Plant Doctor. What I wanna show you how to do today is a step-by-step -step guide of how to make homemade weed killer and we're gonna compare it against traditional weed killer, glyphosate. Let's get started. So how do we make homemade weed killer? You're gonna need a few things here. You're going to need some distilled vinegar you're going to need some salt and you're going to need some sort of soap and we're going to use Dawn dishwashing detergent here. One thing I would recommend against is not to use antibacterial soap, just use regular dishwashing soap and it'll work just fine. Now. So we're going to mix this one part salt to 16 parts vinegar. So I have a little spray bottle here and all we're going to do is I am going to put in one cup of vinegar and we're going to put in one tablespoon of salt. So the thing about the salt is this, I would not use like kosher salt or coarse sea salt. You want to find granulated salt so it mixes up better because we're going to mix this, and if the salt crystals are really big, it's going to take longer to mix up. So here's our salt. So this is going to be our mix that we're going to use. And the soap really doesn't do anything other than act as a surfactant. So it helps this liquid solution stick to the leaves that we're going to put it on. I'm just going to put one squirt of soap in there. We're going to put the lid on. And then you're going to have to let this sit for a little bit because it'll get very foamy because the soap's in there. We're going to let the foam die down. So we're going to let this sit for about five minutes, let the foam go down, and we're going to go out here to the backyard. We're going to, I've got two plots that I'm going to show you, and they have the, the same exact weeds. So I have one plot that has fireweed, a little pine sapling, and an oak sapling. I have another plot, the same thing. We've got fireweed, a little oak sapling, a little pine sapling. We're going to spray the homemade weed killer on one plot. We're going to spray the traditional Roundup or glyphosate. So glyphosate is an active chemical in Roundup, so those two terms are kind of interchangeable. We're going to hit the other plot with this and we're going to compare the two. So here's our first little plot. So we've got a couple of broad leaves and then we've got a, a needle leaf type plant here. Here's our fireweed. There's our little pine sapling, and then over here we've got two little oak saplings. If we move over, we've got the perfect setup over here as well. There's our oak sapling, there's our fireweed, and then behind it there's a little pine sapling. We also have a little bit of Bermuda in here as well, so we're going to spray the Bermuda. This will be our homemade plot, and then over here to our left is going to be the traditional glyphosate plot. So in between shots, I actually had to change out the nozzle here. You may notice it's a different color. The, the other one didn't want to squirt. So we have our homemade weed killer here. And if you can see in the bottle, most of the foam is now on top. I've got enough liquid there on the bottom where the, uh, the straw goes down into it that I can actually get some liquid. And all we're going to do, we're going to do one squirt on each plant. So I'm going to squirt uh, some homemade solution on this oak, this little pine sapling, this fireweed, and I'm going to do the Bermuda as well. One thing I want to make abundantly clear here is that we are spraying non-selective herbicide. What does that mean? Basically, with glyphosate or this homemade weed killer that we're going to experiment with, it will kill anything. So if you have a Bermuda lawn, you have a zoysia lawn, you have fescue, do not spray this on your grass because it will kill the grass and the weeds. Same with Roundup. There's other products that you have, they're called non-selective herbicides, that are going to help you in those situations. So you want to use this in an area where you don't have turf. So this is the, the end of a flower bed here. We've got an area that needs to be resodded. I get a lot of shade here and that's why the, the Bermuda is so thin and spindly and we even got a little moss on the ground. So let's spray this. So that wasn't a decent squirt. There's one squirt on the oak. I got to sit up and get this upright a little bit. There's one on the 
pine sapling. There's one on the fireweed, and then I'm gonna do a couple of squirts. This Bermuda's kind of spread out. That should be enough. Don't saturate the ground with this. This has salts in it. If you put a bunch of salts in your soil and you go back to try to plant in this area, it's not going to end well for you. Just get enough on there to cover the leaves. We're going to come back in 48 hours and see what this looks like. But first, let's go over to our other plot where we're using the traditional weed killer glyphosate. And we're going to spray that and we're going to compare the two. Okay, so I just turned on my sprayer and we're going to spray this fireweed, this pine tree, and these two little oaks right here. And all we're going to do is just like before, one little squirt there, one little squirt there, and then we'll hit these two little oak saplings. And that's it. We're going to come back in 48 hours. We're going to look at our homemade herbicide versus the traditional, what you buy at the store, glyphosate and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's been a few days since we put out our chemicals. And this right here is the homemade chemical. So this is our salt, vinegar, and Dawn dishwashing detergent. You can see here, this is what's left of that little fireweed that we sprayed. It is smoked. It did a really good job of, of knocking that out. There's our oak tree we sprayed. You can see it's browning up the leaves really good. There's our pine tree. You can see at the bottom, it's browning up. So the pine tree looks like it's browning from the bottom up towards the top. So I would suspect here in another two, three days that will be completely brown. This one's almost completely brown. It's, it looks like this one's browning from the top down. These leaves on top are completely brown. And then the ones on the bottom, you can see here, starting from the outer tips, it's browning inward. So this will be dead in another couple of days. The Bermuda, Bermuda is so tough. It killed some of it. And you can see right here, we've got some brown in it, but we also got a lot of green in it as well. So the homemade herbicide or weed killer has worked really well here. Let's go compare it to the Roundup. Okay, so this is where we sprayed Roundup. And you can see here, the fireweed starting to curl over a little bit. It's got some black in it. This will be dead in another day or two. So here's the oak trees and the pine trees that we've sprayed. And they're not showing a lot of signs of decay yet, but they'll die. Uh, sometimes it takes Roundup a week or more to work, especially on these hardy plants like oak, something that's got a thick cuticle on the leaf. And, and pine trees have a thick cuticle as well. But these will eventually die back. So as you can see, both products work. The homemade herbicide works. The Roundup or glyphosate works as well. Their mode of actions are a little bit different. So the homemade herbicide, how it works is it works with acidity and salinity to kill the weed. And it's a good product, but I wouldn't spray that in the same spot over and over and over again because the salts will build up in the soil and eventually you will not be able to plant there. Roundup works a little bit different. So it acts on what we call the three aromatic amino acids or essential amino acids. The human body does not produce those amino acids. We have to get them in our diet. Plants produce those. And so it, it interferes with that amino acid process and that's how they work. And sometimes that takes a little bit longer. A word to the wise when using glyphosate or Roundup, there is some peer-reviewed research that would suggest that it does interfere with the gut biome of bees. So if you have a pollinator garden in your yard like I have here, you may want to just use that very sparingly or not at all. But other than that, as long as you're using it by the label, you should be okay. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening.